Hello, I am Dominic and it seems I just can't get enough of Infinity Book Pro 14 from Tuxedo Computers. That's right, that was an eGPU you saw next to it. I'll get to it in a bit. First, I want to take a shot at unlocking the computer with my face. As I mentioned before, next to the regular camera there is an infrared one that can be used to unlock the system and obtain super user privileges. On Linux this can be done with Howdy, available on GitHub. There's a PPA, so installation is a breeze. It's a command line app, no fancy GUI here, but it's not hard to use. Then you just do sudo howdy add, the camera will flash red at you, and away you go. All this is for nothing, however. Howdy is just too problematic to be used with Tuxedo OS at the moment. It'll recognize your face on the login screen and let you in with a click, but after that you'll still need to enter your password to unlock your keyring. You can get sudo privileges in the terminal, but you can't unlock a locked session because unknown error 1. Also, from my testing, if you move to a different place or the light changes, it'll stop recognizing you. It'll work again once you add another face. Once you've done this a few times, it'll recognize you in most cases. Having said all that, it's absolutely awesome a few people were able to implement this kind of functionality that works so well. I absolutely recommend you try it and even contribute to its development if you can. Having put Tuxedo OS through its paces, let's see how something else fares on it. To keep things simple, the latest Ubuntu, 2104. The first thing that greets me is a horribly flashing screen. After a quick query to the duck, the cause turns out to be a power-saving bug that's been around for a good few years now. A simple boot option later, all is resolved. Looking at Tuxedo's boot config, they use the same workaround. Just don't forget to do update grab after this. It's smooth sailing after that. Well, mostly. I quickly noticed how quiet the computer was compared to Tuxedo OS. The fan barely spun up, no matter the workload. Soon after, I realized my newfound oral comfort was the result of significantly reduced performance. Looking into the BIOS, performance was selected as expected. Switching the CPU's governor from PowerSafe to performance had no effect as did in selecting another profile in GNOME's settings. Cutting a long story short, since it took me a good while to figure this out, it seems the Tuxedo Control Center must somehow alter the settings in the UEFI. The laptop gets permanently stuck in silent mode, regardless of what's set in the BIOS. To get it back into performance, I have to reboot, go into BIOS, select silent, reboot, go into BIOS again, and select Performance. That's a lot of rebooting. Never have I been this happy to hear fan noise. This has to be done every time you want to boot into a different system after using Tuxedo OS. Unless you're fine with using the silent and less performant mode, of course, which is a viable choice. In silent mode, the fan will not spin up much no matter what, so the CPU underload will quickly settle on around 2.4 GHz. CPU intensive benchmarks take a sizable hit, though it's worth noting Ubuntu 2104 in performance mode is quite a bit faster than Tuxedo OS in default profile. That may be due to newer packages. Tuxedo OS is based on Ubuntu 2004, after all. Tuxedo Control Center is a boon in this respect. Once you need more CPU performance, just switch the profile and that is that. Without it installed, you must reboot. Since the USB-C connector on the right is actually a Thunderbolt 4 port, it's just begging to be put to good use. Connecting an eGPU is definitely that. 
The eGPU enclosure I have here is the Akitio node. It comes with a Thunderbolt 3 interface and a 4-lane PCI Express 3 slot. The two GeForce cards I have to hand are a 980 Ti and a 1050 Ti. First, let's take a look at the Ascent. When I tried it earlier with the integrated GPU, it was borderline unplayable. As you can hear, the Akitio enclosure and the graphics card in it add a lot of noise to the whole setup. Even the lowly 1050 Ti manages very decent frame rates. The 980 Ti does significantly better, though of course nowhere near three times the performance one might expect. Frame rates on an external screen are a little better than the built-in one. Rise of the Tomb Raider is another game that wouldn't run at 30 FPS even at a very low resolution and on the lowest settings. The result is very different this time. I tested all the games in 1080p and at their respective high presets. The picture is the same in The Witcher 2. Suddenly absolutely playable in 1080p, which looks very good on the laptop's 14-inch screen. Interestingly, switching to silent mode in the BIOS has little to no bearing on frame rates in the games I tested. Only The Witcher 2 shows a big difference on the 980 Ti. It looks like the game is CPU bound at this point. The biggest difference you'll see, though, is in the processing of Vulcan shaders we all know and love. This is very CPU intensive. Despite the reduced noise from the laptop itself, the Akitio enclosure and the graphics card inside it still manage to make quite a racket. As you can see, an external graphics card, even as ancient as the two I used, can provide pretty respectable gaming performance over Thunderbolt. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether it's worth it with the huge box and the additional noise. This is it for the bonus round of my review. After part 2 I thought I was done, but I couldn't resist playing with it a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed the video, stay tuned for more content of this type. Thank you for watching and see you soon.